It's a familiar story across the UK, as Keeley discovered when she joined climbers in the Peak District National Park, sharing a rock face with a rare breed of visiting bird. Can both sides coexist? I've come to one of the most iconic features of the park, a four-mile-long gritstone escarpment which stretches along its eastern side. This is Stanage Edge. A quarter of a million visitors are drawn to this special place every year, but there's one that makes an epic journey to get here. The rare ring oozel, smaller than a blackbird, winters in North Africa, but travels thousands of miles to breed and nest in Britain. Its numbers have been in steady decline for 25 years, with fewer than 8,000 pairs believed to be in summer residence, some right under the fingers and toes of the climbing community. The problem is the birds and the climbers want this rock. It's ranger Bill Gordon's job to act as peacemaker in the battle between climber and bird. Nationally, they've declined by 58%, which is quite, uh, it's quite considerable, really, in, in overall terms. Look, here's one now. We can just see, you can see the male. Oh, yeah? And he's just up on that rock ledge there. And if you just take these, just have a look. He's just up there. Oh, yes, look at him. And that's the male. That's the male. Yeah. And you have, it'll, it'll be principally earthworms that it'll have. Yeah, there he's he is. He's got a mouth full of food. And he's calling to the chicks. How many nests have you had along this particular uh, climb? So here we've got five nests. Um, we've had failures, three of which have been failed through some form of disturbance, and we've had one predation. The problem is, is that once they become extinct from an area, you don't get them back. So there are areas in the country where they've gone completely. Exmoor is a classic example. Dartmoor, they're struggling with their small population. So here's a real stronghold. And that's something Bill is working hard to maintain. So how do you protect a rare bird at such a crucial time? Well, instead of going head to head with the climbers, Bill decided to get them on board. So this is all ready to, for me to start then. Kim Leyland's a climber and ecologist. Come on, join me. I'm gonna try. Bill's roped him into conducting bird surveys to help protect the ring oozel. He's agreed to show me what makes this place irresistible for both climber and bird. I'm not wearing the helmet. <laughs> so you can see it from both sides, really, then. Do you think it's possible to have the climbers climbing and the birds nesting at the same time? Yeah, absolutely. It really it seems to work really well, the system we've got, where quite often there's climbers who will let us know where the birds are nesting, because climbers will see them first, and they'll email us or get in touch and let us know they've seen birds, and then if we don't know about them, we can go and have a look and sit and decide if we need to put signs up. If a ring oozel nest is found near a route, then climbers are warned to keep well away. This minimises disturbance to the birds and increases the chance that the chicks will successfully fledge and return to Stanage Edge next year. So what are the ring oozels looking for when they're making their nests? So they're looking for generally these horizontal breaks, maybe a, a bit narrower than these, and they usually, they usually like a bit of heather, some sort of cover to hide in a little bit, and then they'll, uh, they'll go deep in, deep in the breaks and, uh, and make the nest in there. So right where the climbers want to be as well, really? A lot of the time, yeah, because obviously the breaks provide good holes, places to put your gear in. Is it the climbers being around the nest, or is it as literal as somebody putting their hand in the nest? It's generally the climbers being around the nest, so when, when, there's, when there's people around, if the birds are off the nest, they won't come back or they may get scared off the nest and then, then be reluctant to come back. Also, if they're feeding the chicks and they're trying to bring food into the nest, if there's people nearby, they, uh, they won't necessarily come back. Wow, I'll tell you what, now the sun's come out, I can really understand what the attraction is. Fantastic. For Bill, protecting the ring oozel is more than a 24-7 job, it's a passion. We need the communication, we need the partnership with everybody that we can. And the climbers, the BMC, the British Mountaineering Council are a fundamental part of that. We're just pushing the word out that as recreationalists, we can live alongside nature um, and, um, and that's really the most important thing. Of course, they're not here all year round. Do you miss them when they've gone? 
Uh, it's a difficult question. I've not had a day off for three months. I've been up every morning. I've been out every evening looking and just checking on them. So at the end of when they finally finish their breeding, I am relieved to some extent. It means I can have a day off or I can go away on holiday or have something. And you deserve it. <laughs> but at the same time, you do love them because they're a quintessential part of the British Uplands, they're a quintessential part of Stanage Edge. And I think that the work that we do uh, is to try and perpetuate this species uh, in this environment for everybody to enjoy.